All right, let's take a look at a, a real case. Uh, this is a manufacturing company. They happen to be a C corporation, although it's not critical that they be a C. Uh, uh, but, but to some degree it is, because it's just if you're a C corporation, you've got tax at the corporate level, both federal and if you're in a state that has income tax, you've got state income tax. And then to the extent that your compensation is already large, remember that any other payouts are going to be dividends. Uh, and so that means the dividends are going to get taxed again. So you could have 35 federal, 5 to 10 percent state, plus then another 15 percent in dividend on the federal level and another whatever the state might be taxing you at. So uh, a C Corp is really uh, even more compelling story uh, for a successful C Corp is even more compelling story for a captive than any other business entity. Uh, in this particular case, about $35 million in sales. They've got plants all over the world, 300 employees, net profit of about $4.5 million annually, and lots of insurable risks. Uh, you know, these people are dealing with chemicals. They're dealing with all sorts of processing of uh, volatile materials. They, they've, got, they've got more risk than they could afford to cover in a million years. Um, and they're not covering it now uh, to a large degree through traditional insurance sources. They could. It's very expensive. Um, they, pro uh, based on an analysis done by one of our captive managers, they have estimated premium to insure all risks totaling $2 million. So in other words, if they wanted to buy captive insurance coverage for all the risks that were identified by the manager and the actuary, uh, they could spend $2 million a year in premium. Now, we're going to talk about two, uh, that number, these numbers. Uh, typically, for most clients, the maximum we're going to be looking at is a million two in premium. And there's, that's because there's a, there's a tax limit around a million two. All we're really saying is, is that these people have identifiable risks that could be insured, and they could spend up to $2 million a year. Are they going to spend $2 million? They're definitely not. Uh, I think in this particular case, these clients are doing, they're currently doing around 800,000 a year in premium. Because again, what you can afford to, what you can afford to insure is different than how much you could insure if you could afford more. Uh, but again, just back to the case study. So we've got a range of risks that could be covered anywhere up to a total of two million. Uh, the captive was formed, the insurance coverage was selected and written. Oh, I guess actually, I'm sorry. In this particular case, they were doing a million too. So uh, premium is a million too. And again, we're going to talk about why that's sort of a magic number. Uh, there's a deduction to the manufacturing company for the premium of a million too. So now you've got a C corporation that would normally be paying tax at the corporate level, both federal and state. So now, instead of paying tax on a million too, they're getting a deduction for a million too which is saving them about $400,000 in income tax. The captive insurance company, and again, I'm skipping over all the technical. We're going to come back to that after we get done sort of setting the stage. Uh, setting the, stage. Um, the captive is making an election which allows them to defer tax on a million two. So on the one hand, you've got a deduction, which means the company's not paying $400,000 in income tax. And the captive has a, made an election so that they're not paying income tax on the premium money coming in. So, so far, nobody's paid any tax on a million, too. So this is very attractive to a lot of business owners who would be saying to you, tell me about estate taxes sometime later. Tell me about how you can save me income taxes today. OK, in year two, assuming that they renew, which they're definitely renewing, uh, there's a, another deduction. Another savings of 400000 A slight difference now. Uh, the captive is still going to get a million two in new premium income, which is non-taxable to them. But they've got some investment income on the first million two that they did last year. Uh, and that investment income is taxable. So it's not much, because in your first year, most of your cash has to stay very liquid. Uh, so there's not much taxable income. I mean, interest rates, bond rates, all et cetera, et cetera, are very low, as everybody knows. So not a lot of taxable income. But whatever that taxable income is, is going to be taxed to the captive. The captives are always taxed as C corporations. So 
they're going to have some tax on that investment income. But what you've got essentially at this point is a million two in first year revenue, a million two in second year revenue. Uh, so whatever the administration costs are, which we'll talk about, whatever the claims are, which uh, typically but not always are low, then we've got a substantial whack of money sitting in the captive. So now we're coming back and saying, did we get wealth accumulation? Yes, we're getting wealth accumulation. Did we get tax advantages? Yes, we got tax advantages. Were we able to insure risk at a lower cost than what it would cost to go outside and get it? Yes. Were we able to save some money on insurance that uh, costs that we might have been paying to Marsh or to Aon? At, I don't remember exactly in this case, but in many cases, that's a possibility. So we're hitting a lot of the objectives that we wanted to hit at the very beginning. Um, and and uh, the client, I can tell you, is, is uh, it, it would love to do more if they could.